Here we have a 2018 highly customized Nissan Irvan NV350 Premium. Today I'm going to show around this car and I'm also going to give it a test drive. But before that, please don't forget to smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm, subscribe to my channel to see more updates, and also don't forget to hit the notification bell so you never miss an update. Let's start with exterior. So the NV350 Premium is definitely a tall car. It's very similar to the uh, Toyota Hiace LXV that we had a while back instead of the new Hiaces, which are long nose but they're a bit shorter so this one it looks pretty much just like that nothing fancy nothing different you do get a nissan badge of course you do get some chrome trim here and there but that's pretty much it as you move on over to the side right here just like the high ace again do you see the distance between the front of the car and where your feet would be so if you're used to living in Western countries where you get crash safety reports, crash safety testing, we'll forget about that. In the Philippines, we don't do that here. We literally don't do that here. So yes, this happens if you do get into a crash here. That's gone. That's a goner. And you, you sit right above your wheels right here. So this one too, at least you have the door on the right side of it. Back in the 90s, uh, we imported a lot of cars from Japan. These were called the surplus cars from, the Jap from Japan. So naturally, they were right-hand drive, just converted into the left-hand drive. So they had suicide doors. We called them suicide doors. Why? Because the very moment you get out of the door on that side, you get ran over. But this one, thankfully, even though it only has one door, it's on the right side of the car, literally on the right side of the car. To open this door up, you have to do it like twice like that. It's a bit tricky. Yeah, once you get that, just like that. Now follow me as I show you around the inside of the car. So to climb in this car, it's not that high, so it's all right, even get a grab handle in here. And once you're in here, there's about enough space to kind of stand. I'm like 5'6", and I have to like slightly bend my knees up like this. In here, uh, the seats, uh, they're all right. Now they look nice in this like leather trim, but there's really not that much uh, padding to it. So in longer journeys, they're not exactly the best. They're not bad either. They're definitely better than the stock ones on the NV350 Premium. Shout out, by the way, to the company who made these seats for only less than 400,000 pesos. They're called Tuned in Style, somewhere in Quezon City. Okay, as we move on over here, so I wanna show you this uh, screen right here on the inside. So you have this really big screen. It looks like a 32 inch screen and it's not bad, could be better. And you get these uh, focal uh, speakers too. Very nice. You also have this divider right here, which uh, it's currently not working right now because of some electrical issues, but actually this can be raised so that you're fully divided from your chauffeur. Aside from that, you get a head unit over here, two then you get this uh, cubby here, cubby here. Uh, this trim, by the way, it's sort of piano black looking. You get cup holders more. And even turn on, like, there's blue lights all over the cabin of this car. And what's cool about this, supposedly, again, if it worked, you can actually press this and Ottomans would come out from the seat. But it gets better from there. So follow me as we enter the car. As you enter here, so you get your second row of seats, also with Ottomans. But honestly, I don't know how that's going to work because your... Uh, Leg room is severely limited, so if you raise that up, there's just you gotta cut off your legs for that. Perfect for after you crash your car. Now in here at the back, you have a bed, and I'm telling you, it's a legit bed. So I can really just lie down here all the way, just like that. It's a perfect way to lounge here at the back. But if you need to carry more people instead of a bed, you can actually pull this one up. There's a latch right here. So you just pull that one up, then you push this back like that. And now you have seating for like one, two, three, four, maybe even five people back here. Aside from that, here all over the side, you get nice soft cushion material that if you do hit your head while it's moving and you're walking around, you won't hurt yourself that much. You also get these curtains, but what's annoying about this that is that since they have this weird, uh, door card right here it does eat a lot into visibility for you so it could kind of get a little bit claustrophobic here inside the car the fact that this car is also nice and high when it comes to the ceiling also helps a lot with egressing the vehicle so you just step on this right away down like that very easy then when you close this 
you don't have to slam it shut. Just make it click like that and it'll suck itself shut. Due to the configuration of this car, wherein it doesn't have a nose, there's no way to put the engine in front. So what they did instead was they slapped the engine right at the middle in between the driver and the passenger side. So technically this is a mint engine car if you think about it. Rear wheel drive as well, wow. So to access the engine bay, first you have to move the seat all the way back. You have to have and move your seat back all the way forward. Once that's out of the way, you remove this uh, noise insulation material and you have this uh, latch right here. So you just unlatch that one up and there's another one towards the center of the vehicle. You just pretty much just feel for it. There, that's unlatched. Then there is this metal tab, which you can then just pull up all the way right that. And under here, you can see that there's this uh, Nissan 2.5 liter inline four diesel engine, which produces 127 horsepower and PS and 356 Newton meters of torque. Now don't worry, even if you're seated in the middle, that engine doesn't really get toasty. So you won't cook your ass while riding this car. That's something you don't have to worry about. And this noise insulation material, it does a rather good job of keeping the engine sound away from under you. Instead, it's coming out from the side. Uh, I'll talk about that in the drive later on. So entering this car it could be a little bit of a chore. So you, get, you have your remote right here, open it up. And as you can see, you do have a step board over here at the side, but I mean, that's, that's not exactly the most ergonomic way of getting up this car. So you have to be a little bit flexible and you have to stand on the wheel itself. So you have a grab handle over here. You stand on top of the wheel, go up like that, and then just sit back down and inside the car. To get out of the car, same thing. The step board is virtually useless. So you just step on the wheel, hold here, and jump out like that. If you do get past the tedious task of entering this car, and finally you're in here, you'll find that it has the same leather work all around that's made by Tuned and Style. And it's, it's an okay, it's not that, uh, just like the back, it's not very cushioned. There's really not much support, but I guess for a little bit of a short journey, it's totally fine, it's totally livable. Anyway, here first, let's check the thud of the door. Sounds like a rattle can, unfortunately. Let's go start the car up, so you don't have push button, just your regular key. You can really kind of like feel that the vibrations are coming from here in the center, in your engine bay. Just a pretty cool thing. Turn on the AC. Nissan's legendary cold AC system is installed in this car. Now in here, materials, forget about it. It's all just plastic all around. There's just so much plastic all over. But you do get a couple of cubbies. So for example, you do get a cubby here on the side, another one down here, and another one over here. This is your ashtray slash coin holder. You even have one up here for two cup holders, which is very handy. It's very centered. I love it. And here up top too, you have a place to put papers, pieces of paper, maybe a map, or you know one of those uh, gate pass things that they give you when you enter a village? This is like the perfect place to put them. I don't know why most cars don't have it, but sir, this is the perfect place to put them. And because of the angle of the, the, the windshield, kind of like reflects to the windshield. That way the guards, when they rove past you, they will see that you have the gate pass over there. Interesting quirk. Now here you have this two in unit, but honestly it's very much useless because the screen is incredibly small. My finger could cover it. So this is pretty much just a one din to me. Get your gear selector, which is, uh, it's only until two, which is quite odd. In most cars it goes up to one. The steering wheel, it's not even multifunction. There are adjustments to it. However, up and down only with no telescope, no, yeah, no, no telescoping. And you have your conventional, typical 90s car handbrake which you have to twist to your near your leg aside from that uh, what's interesting about this car only the premium model has a snow button why would you need a snow button but you have it perhaps it would delay your transmission shifting so as you don't slip in the snow but there's just so much snow here in the philippines huh moving on here in the center you have this jump seat which again is directly under the engine, above the engine rather. And it is very thin, so it's not great for your ass over longer journeys. But don't worry, as I've mentioned earlier, it won't cook your ass even if you sit here for an extended period of time. Close that one up, you go back to the last cubby, which is over here, and you only have a glove box like that. 
So driving this car is pretty much just like driving your regular old Toyota High Ace, at least the older High Ace, not the current one with the nose. So it doesn't have a nose. That means you're seated pretty much on top of the front wheels. So that's just something to look out for when you're turning corners, because if you turn too early as you would in a regular car, at least your perception of when to turn, you will curb your back wheels. Good side to that is that turning radius is great since you have so much view of the front you can pretty much just stick to any corners you want you can just turn at any point no matter how long this car is it's very very easy to turn turning radius is amazing this car has around 128 horsepower 127 and the high ace has 136 i believe but they feel generally the same this car does have more torque though at 350 plus newton meters of torque versus high aces 300 newton meters and that has a three liter engine well this car only has a two and a half liter engine so that's 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 something that's pretty good i thought that from the looks of it it's narrower than a toyota high ace at least the previous generation high ace even the high ace uh, lxv but apparently they're just the same in terms of width but it doesn't feel like it. I feel that this car has a lot more body roll. It's a lot more, huh, that is scary. <laughs> Whoa, yeah. This car, imagine getting T-boned in this car, you're screwed. It's just going to cap, uh, not capsize. It's just going to topple over, roll over. Well, again, please just drive very, very carefully when you do drive this car. If you get into a front end collision, you can easily just say goodbye to your legs. Sure, you get double airbags, both for the driver's side and the passenger side, while the cargo version only gets on the driver's side. But still, I don't think that driver's, driver's side airbag will save your legs. So say hello to being a paraplegic if you do crash this car. Right now, we're going up uh, Tagaytay Highlands. I am flooring the throttle. I'm doing around 3,500 RPM, and I'm only going around 40. 40 kilometers per hour uh, thankfully the harshness of this car it's not that bad like uh, the road here currently it's not exactly the smoothest but it's better it, it feels a bit softer than a Toyota Hiace although it still has the same leaf spring suspension at the back generally it's a, it's a slightly more comfortable car in terms of the harshness it's really just the noise there's just so much noise this car produces not much speed is being translated from all that noise and it's just it's just so much noise going on so if again you're used to driving a high ace it's pretty much like that but i would say that there's a little bit more wind noise from this car and a little bit more diesel noise uh at least the, the engine is doing uh the engine below you it's doing a great job of keeping silent here via this really thick insulation material that it has. But again, since the, there's not much insulation here at the door side, the door panel, the engine sound is permeating under the wheels towards the side and entering to your ears right here. It's just quite annoying. Visibility in this car, well, since this is a highly modified version of it, uh, in the front it's great. There's a very thin panels, pillars all over you, and your windows are nice and big. However, because of this uh, divider right here, you can't see anything out the back. They did install a reverse camera, but it's set too low, and there's also that bike rack at the back, so it's pretty much useless. You just have to kind of depend on your side mirrors, which again, aren't adjustable, so if you're in a pinch and you can't see, see something, your best bet is still to get out of the car and adjust it by yourself. When this car was new, this cost around 1.74 million pesos back in 2018. Today, I believe this costs around 1.886 million pesos. And do I recommend getting this car? Well, not exactly. I don't think anyone would buy this car, at least the premium version, and just be their single car. So chances are this is your second car, and chances are also you might, 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 have enough uh, disposable income to afford this as your second car. So I don't think that people who would buy this are on the lower income side. So with that in mind, what do I suggest instead? You could probably go a step further. You could probably get a Kia Carnival instead. That's a great diesel uh, minivan. 
that can seat up to 11 people, I believe. So it's just a couple less than this. 